Hello, everyone. My name is Isaac. Welcome back to my podcast, or whether you're joining on YouTube. Today, I have the greatest pleasure to be talking to you about the spirit of humility. Or in other words, you can just say humility, whichever one fits you best. But anyway, as I mentioned, today's topic is about humility. But what is the first thing that comes to mind when you think of humility? Well, first thing for me is valuing others or putting others before yourself or uplifting someone, but rather than belittling yourself, you're just uplifting someone else above yourself. And when I think of humility, the first person that comes to mind is Jesus, because Jesus served, led by example, by being the most humble person that I know. He came down to his own creation and died for our sins. He even washed one of his own disciples' feet. Imagine I'm not going to give you any examples of how we can compare to that because, yeah, no, we can see where that's going. But humility, don't take it lightly because let, let me give you an example. Well, some people bounce back from losses, but here's the thing. other Others never recover. What's the difference? Well, John Maxwell says it's humility. And as I mentioned, when I think of humility, it's uplifting someone else above yourself, but not belittling yourself. Let me put it into perspective for you. A few of some of the games that I enjoy playing the most is like ping pong and badminton and some other ones. But those are my top category, or I guess you could say hobbies or other things like that. I remember the other day when I was playing ping pong and there was someone who I thought was a beginner. Of course, they weren't acting. I've, I've had other experiences where people like, oh, I'm just a beginner. I'm just a beginner. And then they end up swiping me, swooping away like a storm or something. I'm like, anyways, I remember I was playing ping pong the other day with one of my friends. And of course, I hadn't seen them in a long time. So it's hard to know whether they played ping pong or not. And so I remember trying to teach them how to play because they were doing a few things wrong. And so I was like, here's the thing. I was trying to give them the basics. But during the match, I found out that instead of, while I was trying to teach them, they were busy during the game trying to show me how to really play the game. And of course, the first time I was going easy, you know, because you got to go easy on the beginners, you know, like for a baby, when you're playing a game with the little kids, I guess you could say, even for myself, I'm still, yeah, I won't belittle myself. For the, when you're playing with people who are younger than you and the younger age, you, of course, you don't go all out and just show them up and say, here's how you do it, because they end up start crying, right? Of course, you have to go easy. And so I was like, you know, what? I'm going to ease into this. Really, I should have started on my top game. And I found out the hard way. But anyways, the part about humility is the second time when I decided to go all out, I guess all out is going hard, doing my full best. And I, even now, I still feel like I didn't. But I even still took the loss. But the part about humility, and here's the thing I didn't tell you, was that humility, as in the opposite, of pride. Sorry, humility is the opposite of pride, and pride is the opposite of humility. I guess you could say they're enemies, but back to the example. The part about humility and pride was that after I took the second loss, and by the way, keep in mind, there are people around you watching. I'm like, oh man. And the score at the time was like three. I had three points. The guy had seven points, and we're going to 11. You can see where that game's going. Anyways. After the, after the second loss, thoughts in my mind started to pop up like, oh man, excuses, I guess you could say like, oh man, the wind's not right. Oh, people are behind me. And if you know ping pong, you know that it's not an indoor sport because the ball is like not exaggerating. It's like this big. And so it can easily be carried by the wind. So it's an indoor sport. Just to let you know if you're losing a little bit too much and you're playing outside when it's a sandstorm. Anyways. Prideful people respond to failure in ways that don't help them move move forward. So instead, I was being, of course, I, of course, those thoughts. I I say their thoughts, but luckily the people there, the the bystanders, the witnesses, aren't here to testify in court about whether it was really thoughts or actions or words. But the pride in me came out, and. Instead of me congratulating them, I ended up doing that anyway because they're a good friend of mine. And so 
the prideful side came out. Instead of me asking, hey, what can I do better? Hey, how do you do that? Instead of asking, hey, those are some cool tricks you did. Can you teach me a little bit something? You know, you kind of just, you know, <laughs> I, I'm thinking of the example, but I can't. Instead of me denying the loss and or like denying and blaming others, instead I can congratulate them and say, dude, that was awesome. What can I do differently? You see, people with the spirit of humility instead learn from successes and losses. So I could have learned from the loss and done a few things differently. Luckily, as I said, the witnesses aren't here to testify about whether I really thought those excuses or said them. But here's what humility would do for you. It gives you perspective. Humility doesn't mean you think less of yourself. It means you think of yourself less. And to put it in another perspective, it's first of all, acknowledging who God is rather than putting yourself and giving yourself all the glory. When I think of that, I think of the Nobel Prize or someone like if someone just got a ring or in basketball and football, they just whatever. When you think of the Nobel Prize, you're like, they always say, hey, what, what are your final words? Or what is someone you want to honor? It's like, oh, I'd like to thank my parents. I'd like to thank my mom for everything. They, you know, of course, that's nice and all, but really, who does the glory really belong to? But we're talking about humility here. So instead of saying, oh, I did it, I did it, I put in the work and, you know, it's I, I, I. But really, who taught you how to walk? Who taught you how to speak? Who did all these other things for you? I've, and I'm not saying, I'm not, I'm not trying to put anything on anybody. I'm just asking, is there another someone in your life who's really pushed you forward? In those experiences, who was there with you? So not only does humility give you perspective, it also gives you a chance to step back and see where, how can I learn in this situation? Like say you're working in a four-man group. Sometimes you may be shut down because other ideas may come and they're like, oh, we don't want your opinion. Instead of firing back with some other words, you can humble yourself, assess the situation and think back and see how you come at it with a different approach. So it also enables you to admit mistakes and thus to learn and grow. So if we're talking about humility, instead of me deciding to make excuses about why I lost or how um, the circumstances around me weren't all right. Next time I can go there, I can, I can come home, I can practice, and then maybe I'll show them what real ping pong is like. No, I'm just kidding. But it allows you to go of perfectionism. Contrary to prideful people, those with the spirit of humility aren't afraid of make, of a mistake, aren't afraid of losing. So if you're still here, I really hope that this podcast and YouTube video recording about the spirit of humility touched you and spoke to you. And of course, not me, come Holy Spirit, so that not what I'm saying, but the Holy Spirit is speaking through me to you guys. God bless you guys. And I pray that this meant something to you. God bless you guys. Peace.